Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we'll be looking at PowerPoint Online, Microsoft's free online editor for PowerPoint presentations. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, Microsoft has a range of different Office apps available, both as offline downloaded installed software and as online versions. Now, the online version of Microsoft PowerPoint is incredibly powerful. So let's start by opening up our browser, in this case, the Microsoft Edge browser, and navigating to Office. So once you have your browser open, make sure you find the Office tab or simply go to office.com. Now on the left hand side, you'll see all your different Office apps. These are the online versions of these applications and PowerPoint is one of them. So let's go ahead and open up PowerPoint. Now the first thing you'll have to decide is, am I going to start a presentation from scratch, a blank presentation, or am I going to use one of these themes? Now you see we have a number of themes here, but there are even more themes available by clicking on more themes. Now these could be considered templates, and everything within these themes is customizable. So don't worry about the images or the colors. You can always tweak it even more once you've selected one of these. So we're going to scroll down and I'm going to select the garden design theme. So let's go ahead and click on that and we get our presentation. Now, as with everything online office, we want to make sure that we title our files first. So at the top, I'm going to click on this and now I'm going to give it a title. So let's call this the demo presentation with PowerPoint online. There we go. Enter and our file now has a name. Now, because we are using PowerPoint online, we're not going to see all the features of the downloaded and installed version of PowerPoint. However, all the features available for the free online version of PowerPoint are incredibly useful. Now using just these features and just this feature set, you can start creating amazing looking professional PowerPoint presentations. You can use them with your students, parents, and share them with whoever you choose to. Now, as you can see from the menu structure at the top, we have a number of very essential features that have made their way to the online environment. Now let's start by inserting a number of different elements. Now when you click on the insert menu, you will see that you can either insert new slides, you can insert a reused slide, and that is like creating a duplicate or a double. You can insert tables, images, text boxes, anything you can think of. Let's start by inserting a text box. Now I'm going to click on text box right here, and this will automatically select that text box for me, and it's at the middle of my slideshow. You can see it right here. Now I can move it around and I can move it to the top. So let's just put in hello. There we go. This text box now says hello. Now because it is an element, a shape, it automatically opens up the shape menu. Now every single shape within PowerPoint Online has their own theme. So here this text box is no different. I can select any of these themes right here and these themes are linked to the theme of the entire presentation. So let's just select one of these right here. There we go, and now our text box has that theme attached to it. Now you can always manually tweak this. We can change the fill color, line, shape outlines. However, the themes will change as your slides theme changes. So now let's go ahead and look at what you can do with images. Well, we already have a placeholder image right here, and I don't really like that image, so I want to change it. Now in order for me to change it, I can either change the size of this image, or I can replace it with my own image. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to select change picture. This now allows me to select a file. I already have a file prepared right here and I'm going to upload that file. I click on insert and after the file has been uploaded, it automatically changes the image and pops that right there. Now you'll see an extra menu appears on the right hand side and that's the designer. Now the designer is PowerPoint's way of very quickly designing your slide using all your images and your text so that it creates a beautifully looking slide and it saves you time. This is great for your students because it will save them time as well. Now let's say that you need this designer and you don't see it. Well, you can always find it by going to the top and under design, 
selecting the designer right here. Once you open up the designer, it reads all the information on your slide, text, images, and everything else present, and then it suggests a number of different designs. So let's just scroll down and just look at these different designs, and I quite like this one. I like this one as well. Let's sort of go, go with this one. We're gonna click on that, and then we are going to automatically see that slideshow change. Now, once it's changed, there's still a couple of different things you can do. Note we are in the design tab and this is where we can now design the theme of our slide. So again, we have a drop down arrow for more themes and we also have different variants. So each theme has its own variants. So you can see here we have a new variant selected and automatically that designer is going to take this into consideration and suggest some alternative designs. This is also done whenever you insert multiple images. So as you can see here at the moment, I have a single image in my slide. I'm going to now insert a second image and let's see what that designer does. We're going to go to insert and then insert a second picture. Now, because we are using the insert picture menu, we have four options to insert images. We can either insert an image from the device as we've done before, upload that file use our cloud storage and OneDrive is a great way of storing your files. We can use a stock image or a Bing picture search. Now I'm going to go with a stock image of forests. So let's go ahead and select stock and then type in forest as our search term. I'm going to scroll down until I find something. Oh, I quite like these ferns here. So we're going to insert that image. Now, as you can see here, the designer is taking this second image into consideration and it suggests different designs for this slide. Let's just have a look at some of the suggestions here. You can see it has a number of different things that it does with it. So let's just select this first one right here and then apply that to this slide. This looks great. And again, as you add multiple images, multiple elements, the designer will adjust. Now I often get the question, okay, it's all great using text and images. Can you use video? Absolutely. Let's go back to that insert menu. We're going to select the online video option and then just pop a URL to an online video into this box. You can click on insert and that video is now pulled from its source and you can just move it around your slide. Again, because we're using the designer, it suggests a number of different features or different designs. I'm going to go with this one and we have all three elements at the top, two images and a video. Now you can see that play button right there. You can use that to preview your video. I'm going to pause it for now because you're probably going to be using this in a classroom setting or to present to parents. So you want to make sure that all your images and all your video is clear and is also working as you are presenting. Now, in my opinion, this already looks great, but you can also add things such as different shapes or tables to your slides. So as you can see here in the instant menu, you have tables. But you also have some smart art that you can insert. You have lines and tables and charts. Anything you can think of can be inserted onto a slide. Once it's done that, your designer is again going to adjust and give you some suggestions for your slides. Now let's say that you're ready to present this slideshow and you're ready to share it with your students or your parents. Well, it's important to note that PowerPoint Online has a number of different ways of presenting your slideshow. Now the first one is just the standard present. So when you click on present, the slideshow loads and you can go from slide to slide to slide. Now doing this is very straightforward. And then when you press the escape button, you go back to the editor. But one of my favorite ways of using the PowerPoint online presentation software is using a guided form of presenting your slideshow. So instead of clicking on present, we're going to click on that drop down arrow. And we're not going to select any of these here. We'll look at those later, but we are going to present live. Now, when I click on present live, a different slide shows up and this is going to show people how they can join my live presentation. That means it's a guided presentation. As I go through my slides, the slides will automatically progress on their individual devices as well. This is great for very large groups where you want everyone to have access to the slides on their mobile device or for distance learning where people are scattered around the world and you want to make sure that you can set the pace for your presentation. So here you'll see there is a link at the top or they can simply use their camera and scan that QR code. 
Once you're ready to go, simply go to that next slide. This is the first slide in your presentation and you can now start going through your slideshow. You can move forward, you can go backwards and people can still use that link at the top to join your slideshow if they've joined late. Once you click on escape, again, you're going to exit that presentation. However, you can see there is a little note there and that note says that you are still presenting to everyone else. It is paused, but it hasn't ended yet. So what we need to do now is either resume this session, jump back in and carry on, or we can end our session. Now I'm going to end the session for now. Let's end the session. And this deactivates the QR code and the link. That means that as people want to join using that same link or that QR code, they will no longer be accepted into this presentation. This is an incredibly useful feature and I absolutely love using this, especially with large groups of parents and students where you're trying to make sure that everyone is on the same page and they know exactly what you're talking about. The other one you saw there was the rehearse with coach. Now this is where you get a number of additional features and this is great when you're trying to make sure that your presentation makes sense and you're going to present to a, let's say that you're doing a keynote speech or you're presenting to parents. Well, this coach will help you to keep the correct pace and also to go through your slides in order. Now, as soon as you click on start rehearsing, it will start recording everything you say. And then it's also going to give you a little bit of feedback on what you say how fast you're saying and speaking. There we go. Now, once you exit the coach, you'll get a little overview here. Now, this shows you, okay, what's the total time you've spent on your presentation? How many slides have you rehearsed? How many words a minute? Is the pace too fast, too slow? What's your overall pace? And you can really use this to improve your presentation over time. So if you're giving a very important keynote or a very important presentation, Using this coach will help you to make sure that you're keeping the right pace, that you are very well aware of how fast you're moving and where are you going a bit faster, where are you slowing down your presentation and is it effective. Now I love this feature, it also shows you a number of sensitive phrases and how original is your speech, are you repeating yourself, are you not repeating yourself at all. This can really help you tweak the presentation and improve it. Once you're ready, you can click on rehearse again and then just go through it one more time. We're going to close that for now. Okay, everything is looking great. Let's add a bit of interactivity to our presentation. Now let's start with a form of interactivity that we can control and then we'll look at some additional things we can do. Now the first thing you'll see here in the menu structure is transitions and animations. Now transitions are little animations in between slides. Animations are animations for objects. So we'll look at both. Let's start with transitions. And these are some of the transitions you can put in between your slides. You can see we have none, morph, cut, fade. But when you click on that drop down arrow, we have even more transitions for slides. So let's go with uncover. And let's just say that we want to apply this to every single slide in our slide deck. Now we don't have to do that, but we can easily do that by First of all, selecting a duration. I'm going to set it to three seconds, so it's very clear, and then apply to all. Now, when I click on present, you will notice that as I move from slide to slide, we have that transition. Now, this makes your presentation more enjoyable to watch, and it also, it is a way of making sure that everyone sees visually that you're moving on to the next slide. Do be careful with this, don't overuse this because it can easily distract your students. However, that being said, when used the right way, it can bring that attention back to your slideshow. So let's go back to the editor and let's look at some objects. Now here we have a number of objects on our first page. I want to make sure that these are animated as well. So first select your object and then go to that tab that says animation. Now these animations are for the object, not the slide. Again, we have that drop down box and we can use all sorts of animations. I'm going to use the grow and, tur grow and turn. We're going to select that second image and this one we're going to use fly in. Now you see those numbers, one, two, that means the order these animations are going to take place. So now let's present again. We're going to present from the beginning and there we go. And now when I click on next, 
the first animation happens. And then when I click again, the next animation happens. Now, whenever you're animating text, you have an additional feature. So let's go ahead and click on options. Here for this text, you will see that I can either move it as a single object, animate the entire thing. I can move everything at once, or I can go in paragraph at a time. So using the setting for this animation will allow you to introduce a single concept at a time without having to create multiple text objects for each of those things that you want to discuss. In the slideshow menu, we see all those things that we've discussed. We can either present from the beginning, from the current slide, present live, or use subtitles as well as rehearse with a coach. Now, one thing to note about the present live, you do have a drop down arrow that allows you to change the sharing settings. Only people in your organization or anyone that has access to that link. You can change that, you can change that at any point in time, and then you can also present to a much larger audience. Now, seeing as we are talking about sharing, let's get some people to help us out with this presentation and let's just give them editing rights. We can either go to the file menu and then all the way down, we can share this. So here you can see, we can share it with people or we can embed it on our website. Let's go ahead and select share. And now I can select people to help me out with this presentation. I can change these settings here. So anyone with a link can edit, maybe people within my domain or people with existing access. I can also select specific people. And then here we can tick the allow editing. We can also set an expiration date. That means that we can allow editing for say a couple days and then we revoke that access. This is really useful when you're having multiple editors and some people just only need access for a single day. In addition to setting an expiration date, you can set a password and it's just an additional layer of security. So you're giving someone access, but they also need a password to access the file. Let's go ahead and cancel this at the moment because there's also a second way to get to this share menu and that's in the top right corner. Click on share and you get the exact same menu. And then there is one more very important menu I'd like to highlight during this video and that is the review tab. So let's go ahead and click on review and then you'll see that you have a number of options at the top that will help you to really create the best possible presentation before actually presenting it. We have a check slide where you're going to get some suggestions so you can see here, we're suggested to use subtitles. We can turn this on. We can check the accessibility of our slide. And this gives us some information about how accessible our slideshow is. So here on the right, you can see there's some missing alternative text, captions, reading order, and then you can make changes based on these suggestions. Mark all as read. That means that we have checked everything. We can show the changes that have taken place in our document or add a number of comments. Now comments can also be added by simply right clicking and then selecting new comments on any object within your slideshow. And you can also directly add in other people or other editors to then action these comments. This is again an incredibly useful feature for PowerPoint online. So all in all, I think PowerPoint online is a super useful platform. It's available online. You can access it from any browser. We have looked at it through the Microsoft Edge browser, but any other browser will do just fine. And the other benefit of having it all online means that you can access it from anywhere in the world. All you have to do is simply log into your Microsoft account and you have access to your files. I hope you found this helpful. For even more tips and tricks on different software programs you can use, check out the suggested video at the top or click on that playlist down below. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.